Iran test fires missiles that could strike Israel. But a major shift in Washington overshadows the military threat. Are the US and Iran ready to give diplomacy a try? Next on Global Pulse. Today on Global Pulse, from the brink of war to a new diplomatic opening in the Iran nuclear crisis, all through the eyes of the media. Iran flexed its military might. A missile test suddenly turned into global saber rattling, with both US and international news turning up the volume. Iran wanted the world to see the missile test. It was broadcast on Iranian TV and followed with harsh words from the head of Iran's Air Force. Despite international calls for them to abandon the tests, Iran remains defiant. The commander of the Revolutionary Guard said the war games were intended to show Tehran can retaliate against a potential military strike by Israel or the United States. Iran's President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad says Israel and the United States do not dare to attack Iran. The missile launches come amid fears that Iran is enriching uranium for an atomic bomb. The propaganda war even took a bizarre turn. As NBC News reported, Iran added Photoshop to its arsenal of weapons. The U.S. is saying the photo we saw yesterday was a fake. American analysts say not only does it appear to be a photo of tests uh, done two years ago, it was also digitally altered, doctored to show four missiles. But suddenly, the sabers stopped rattling. And as CNN reported, the U.S. made a surprising U-turn. A major policy shift today by the Bush administration on Iran. A top U.S. diplomat this weekend holding talks with an Iranian official about Tehran's nuclear program. The Bush administration had insisted it would not have any negotiation and denies, in fact, there will be a negotiation in this meeting until Iran stops its nuclear program. Policy shift or show for the cameras? Fox TV talked tactics while Iran's press TV saw a diplomat on a very short leash. But Burns said the State Department will only be there to listen, not to negotiate. At the White House, spokesman Dana Perino said that this is a one-time mission. Burns is not authorized to talk to Jalili one-on-one. -on -one, and he'll only be in the room to hear what Iran has to say, nothing more. Is this a new tactic, if you will? Yes. Uh, does it send a signal? Yes. Uh, is the substance any different? No. But why, after refusing to sit down at the table, did the U.S. decide to pull up a chair? Fox and the BBC offered different theories. Oil traders fear any military conflict could cause Iran to block the Strait of Hormuz, which handles more than a third of world tanker traffic. Privately, administration officials say economic sanctions are having a major effect in Tehran, and there are indications that the Iranians want to take the incentives package, despite public statements otherwise. As the U.S. and Iran give diplomacy a try, hardliners on both sides spoiled for a fight. Former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations John Bolton told the Wall Street Journal, Instead of debating how much longer to continue five years of failed diplomacy, we should be intensively considering what cooperation the U.S. will extend to Israel before, during, and after a strike on Iran. While Bolton went public, the battle between hardliners and Iran was behind the scenes. The BBC asked, who's really calling the shots in Tehran? Iran says it's ready for new talks with the EU envoy Javier Solana. But behind the scenes, the president, the revolutionary guards, and the supreme leader seem to be engaged in a fierce policy battle over whether to offer any real concessions. A debate between hardliners and very hardliners. For Global Pulse, I'm Erin Coker. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world.